All right, chemistry. This is part one of your two-part uh, video lecture on chapter 22, nuclear chemistry, section two, radioactive decay. What we're going to be covering in part one of this video lecture, I want you to be able to define and relate the terms radioactive decay and nuclear radiation. I want you to be able to describe the different types of radioactive decay and their effects on the nucleus. Then lastly, define the terms half-life and explain how it relates to the stability of a nucleus. And we'll cover our last two objectives for this section next lecture. Let's get started with defining radioactive decay. Radioactive decay is the spontaneous disintegration of the nucleus into a slightly lighter nucleus accompanied by emission of particles, electromagnetic radiation, or both. Nuclear radiation is particles or electromagnetic radiation emitted from the nucleus during radioactive decay. An unstable nucleus that undergoes radioactive decay is a radioactive nuclide. Again, that term nuclide is specific to nuclear chemistry. We're talking about a, a specific instance of an element of an atom. So we have nuclear, we have nuclear radiation is a result of radioactive decay. All of the nuclides beyond atomic number 83 are unstable and thus radioactive. 83 being bismuth, everything beyond that is considered or actually is radioactive and will disintegrate until it becomes stable. Now let's look at those different types of radioactive decay. There are several types. You're going to need to know each type discuss the process and describe its effect on the nucleus itself. A nuclide's type and rate of decay depend on the nucleon content and the energy level of the nucleus. We talked about uh, the magic numbers and the nuclear uh, energy shell model. We're referring to that here, the energy level of the nucleus. First type of radioactive decay we're going to cover is alpha emission. An alpha particle, yes, that's the same thing that we talked about during Rutherford's gold foil experiment. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons bound together. That's a, that's a helium nucleus. And is emitted from the nucleus during some kinds of radioactive decay. We represent this alpha particle as either this uh, Greek A or alpha or the symbol notation for helium Four. Now, this is not truly helium-4 in, in that stable sense because there are no electrons here. It's not a whole atom. This is a charged particle. It's positively charged because there are no electrons to balance out those two positively charged protons. But we can uh, represent an alpha particle in this way. Alpha particle emission is restricted almost entirely to heavy, heavy nuclei. So when we're going to be looking at alpha emission, be ready to look at something that has 70 protons or more. Next type of uh, radioactive decay, beta emission. A beta emission, again, that's a, that's a Greek beta there, B. A beta particle is an electron emitted from the nucleus during some kinds of radioactive decay. In order to decrease the number of neutrons, a neutron can be converted into a proton and an electron. How does this work? We have our neutron and if we can strip a negative charge from the neutron but none of the mass just the negative charge we have essentially an electron represented by this beta the Greek B mass number zero atomic number negative one as a negative one charge. What's left over after that negative charge, that electron has been stripped from the neutron, is now positively charged. We've subtracted a negative one, and that is the same thing as adding a positive one. So we actually have made a proton by stripping the negative charge, stripping a negative charge from that neutron represented by the equation here. The atomic number increases by one and the mass number stays the same. This is what I'm wanting you to look at. This point, this last bullet, is what is going to clue you in that this is, in fact, beta emission. 
positron emission is the next type of radioactive decay we're going to look at. A positron, not a proton, but a positron is a particle that has the same mass as an electron. Okay, it's going to be represented by a mass number of zero because it's incredibly, incredibly uh, small in mass, but has a positive charge. Okay, it's the opposite charge and is emitted from the nucleus during some kinds of radioactive decay. So in order to decrease the number of protons, a proton can be converted into a neutron by emitting a positron. Now, this is kind of like the strange cousin of the beta emission that we just saw. You can see some very similar things. It's just that we're going the opposite way. So we have our proton with a mass number of one, uh, uh, atomic number of one, it's representing its positive charge. And we strip off of that a positron, which is uh, sim it's identical to an electron in mass. So we have the mass number of zero. But this time, this subscript number is a positive one. So we're going to represent a positron with that same B, that same Greek beta, that B. However, it's positively charged with no mass, no uh, zero mass number. And because we've stripped away that positive charge from the proton, it is now neutrally charged. It has no overall charge whatsoever. We didn't change the mass, so the mass number stays one, but the charge is now zero. It's neutral. It is a neutron. So what we're seeing here, what I want you to cue in on, key in on, to realize that this is a positron emission, is that the atomic number decreases by one, but the mass number stays the same. All right, next type of electro, uh, radioactive decay, electron capture, electron capture. We had beta emission, which is essentially a electron emission, but now we're having the opposite direction, electron capture here. In electron capture, an inner orbital electron is captured by the nucleus of its own atom. Now, we don't have a lot of context here for inner orbital electron because we haven't gone over the content from chapter four, that'll be our next chapter. But for now, it's not going to play into what we're talking about all that much. We are going to pay attention to the fact that an electron is being absorbed into a nucleus. So in order to increase the number of neutrons, an inner orbital electron combines with a proton to form a neutron. So we're taking something that has a negative charge and we're mixing it with something that has a positive charge. Those charges offset, creating a charge of zero. Okay, so we have an overall zero charge represented by this neutron with, a, with an atomic number of zero. But the mass numbers, we have a zero for the electron, essentially no mass, plus the proton, mass number of one, to yield our typical neutron. What, I'm, what am I wanting you to key in here to realize what's going on? The atomic number is decreasing by one, but the mass number stays the same. All right, now we get to some really aggressive stuff, gamma emission. Now here I have a diagram depicting the electromagnetic spectrum. We have gamma rays over here to the far left. We also have some X-rays, we have ultraviolet rays. Then we have the visible light spectrum followed as we become smaller and smaller in energy. We have infrared, heat waves, we have microwaves, we have TV and FM radio waves, and we have AM radio waves, and then we have our long, long radio waves. Gamma rays, represented by the Greek gamma, you can look at it as a Y if you'd like. Gamma rays are high energy electromagnetic waves emitted from a nucleus as it changes from an excited state to a ground state. And again, we haven't covered these different energy levels uh, within an atom. And so this is going to be a little bit of rote memorization for us, and that'll become a little bit more clear next chapter. But for now, in the transition from an excited state to a ground state, gamma rays are emitted. There are three principal types of nuclear radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha radiation was the first type of radiation discovered. An alpha particle is the same as the nucleus of a helium atom. 
When this particle is emitted from a radioactive nucleus, the atomic number decreases by 2, and the atomic mass decreases by 4. Notice, however, that the total charge and mass before and after the emission are unchanged. Beta radiation occurs when a neutron decays into a proton and an electron is emitted. A beta particle is simply a very fast-moving electron. The atomic number of the emitting nucleus increases by 1. As before, the total mass and charge do not change. Notice, however, that the total charge and mass before and after the emission are unchanged. Many nuclear reactions leave the nuclei in high-energy states. Gamma radiation allows this high-energy nucleus to be converted to a more stable low-energy state. Gamma radiation is a high-frequency electromagnetic wave similar to visible light or X-rays. It has no charge or mass, so the emitting nucleus is unchanged. Alright, for our last slide that we'll cover in this part of the video lecture, I have a summary in table form of the different types of radioactive decay. Here we see if we have alpha emission, we're going to be emitting an alpha particle. We have the symbol that represents an alpha particle as well as its charge, and then mass in AMU. We have a beta particle, we have a positron, and we have gamma rays. This is some data that you can expect and count will be represented on the quick write, the quiz, and on the test. So please be aware of this table for future reference. All right, that'll wrap up this portion of the video lecture. I will see you next period.